How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another show of Legends of the Unknown. I'm your host, Keith, and I'm with my other host, Matt and Frank. What's going, guys? Our YouTube channel is just starting out, so uh, if you could subscribe to the channel, help us out, share our podcast. Uh, we're trying to, you know, get our exposure out there, so the more people share, uh, the more it helps. So uh, today we're going to get into the legend of... Uh, Boston, also known as Helltown, Ohio. How many people have heard of this? I have not. Not a nothing. Nope. I mean, I've been up in the area apparently. Okay, I've never heard of this. Okay, so a little bit of background. Uh, we're going to go get into the history of it, but a little bit of background is basically this is a, a abandoned ghost town. Um, so the history of it is. Uh, the land sits within the Cuyahoga Valley. Uh, it's a national park at this point. It was originally settled by the Mingo tribe in the 1700s. Uh, later, the Mingo tribe would abandon the land in 1755, and the Lenape tribe would resettle here in 1770. So it goes way back. Right? Uh, the Len Lenape tribe. If I'm saying that wrong, I apologize. Uh, would name the land Cleartown after the, the clear stream that ran through that land. Uh, once they found out that the clear, or the word clear in German language was hell, they renamed the, the, the village to Helltown. So that's how it quote unquote supposedly got its name. Um, in 1782, violence would break out. In 96, Lenape, Lenape, Lenape were killed, known as the Gadden Massacre. So, this has already got some basically like bad blood with it. You know, it's already got the legend kind of started with at least paranormal if yeah, not true. other because of the violence that occurred in that area yeah uh before we go any further helltown has several legends with it we're only going to dive in like four or five so the information i get um when i research it i will put the link in the description of our channel and uh, you guys can check it out for yourself as well uh, and it actually tells you the legend and the truth of it so um, back to the legend. 100 years later, grave sites uh, for Lenape. How'd you say it? I'm thinking it's Lenape. Lenape? Yeah. Um, Probably both of them. They're, they're still there. So once people incorporated this land, uh, the farmers actually started just mowing over the, the grave sites. So they, yeah, they just created the grave. Yeah. So, I guess when I guess bad things started happening once they did that. Oh, terrible things happened throughout its entirety of being a village itself, supposedly. Uh, so, like I said before, it's already got kind of a cursed history to it through the violence and everything else. Uh, after its establishment in 1806 as Boston, many people would come and go because of the various mil, uh, mills and work along the Ohio Erie Canal. Uh, the village would take its biggest hit in 1974 when President Gerald Ford signed into legislation that gave the, na the National Park Services the power to buy your land and make you basically forced into selling it to the government or natural parks or national parks. What do, what do you guys, guys think, think about, about this legend so far? Do you, how do you think it's going to go? I don't know. I, I think with anything in terms of disturbing Indian burial grounds, you're always going to have bad news. And that, that's just seen over and over and over again, where I, they, they were just super spiritual people. So I, I believe that they did something in the afterlife to the point where you know, you mess with their graves, they're gonna they're gonna strike back at you. So, 
Um, it may not be them, but it may be some other person in the in their realm that that is doing that. Just just because they you disturb any greater, you might have some bad news. But I think I think it's I think they were just in tune with the earth and everything around, just nature. Yeah. That I think it it, it there's something bigger had that happens when you disturb the new bear realm. What do you think? You know, I'm I'm intrigued about this one. Uh, definitely, as far as the history standpoint goes, uh, I know this was this that territory was definitely Shawnee territory. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the bigger like the Shawnee Nation. So, I'm curious where the Lenape actually came from, or were forced to be from. So, because uh, that almost sounds Lenape to me. Almost sounds like a French type name. So I wonder if they were forced to move from uh, New York area or so. Well, some of them actually took the side of the British during the Revolutionary War. So if that tells you, I mean, there's not much that goes on past this, but if that tells you anything. I mean, they 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 stood up for the British to take out colonists. Basically, they're forcing them out of their, out of their land. Yeah. So, now, now this is where the legends legend actually started for help. Me, me personally, personally, anytime that we talk about Native, Native American legend and so forth, that's, that's one that kind of gets home, like where you're saying they're in tune with nature and everything that's around them. So, if someone says, hey, you disgrace this grave or walk across it, this is Native American, you'll be cursed for the rest of your life. I would go like six miles out of the way and up the road so I don't mess with you know. Just because it has that uh, supernatural legend behind it. Yeah. So Boston was bought up by the National Park Services and the residents were evacuated, started in uh, the National Park Services started putting up signs that said US property, no trespass, which we can always go with. They didn't want to trespass. Mostly for federal government, they would put up no trespassing, no trespassing signs out. Um, Which to most Americans means, oh, hey, something fun is there. Let's go. Yeah, let's explore. Yeah. Exactly. But keep that in mind. It's, the government basically has a tie to pretty much all of these legends that mm. start. So conspiracy theory, legend, and so forth. Okay. Um, they put up all these no trespassing signs in these buildings. Some houses were used for training and controlled burnings, while others just stood there with the sign. So many people thought, okay, why are some of these buildings being burnt and then others just being left alone and stood there with the property signs? Which most people would kind of think, like, why are you just burning random houses and then you're leaving the other ones to go? Well, with the government, it ran out of money, and it ran out of time. So that's why a lot of it was standing. And most of it was standing until 2016. Uh, some houses, uh, like I said, were for, for burning and so forth. Uh, the first legend, though, is the government cover. This is about a chemical spill that caused the mutation of area residents and their children. Hang on. Me out now. You laugh, but yeah. Yeah. we got Flint. Flint, Michigan. Look at there's no Yeah, way. that's a whole other. We're not gonna go Flint, Michigan. That's a whole other argument. Look at Chernobyl. Yeah, Chernobyl had a chemical spill and it affected not really a chemical spill, but a radiation leak leak, yeah. and it affected the citizens. Correct. Okay. So with doing some of this research, because I thought, well, mutation, kids, you know, run around with the arm sticking out of their head and everything else, like, I don't believe that, right? But it actually has came to some truth to this. There was a uh, landfill that was by the Krager family. 
uh, and this was near Helltown. So when the Krager family uh, actually obtained this land, it was actually 10 years after they took it from Boston. So 10 years after that, it was still a functioning uh, landfill. Uh, when they obtained it, rangers were patrolling it, and they were coming back here violently sick, they had headaches, uh, they would actually come up with rashes and so forth. So they called the EPA in to, to investigate it, right? Yeah. It came to light that for years, people have been dumping chemicals that were severely hazardous, severely toxic um, from these major companies that were, were dumping in the in landfill. Yeah. So they closed the site off completely, started cleaning up, and they never finished cleaning up. So it's actually still there today with all this biohazard chemicals. So where this legend goes, the, the uh, nature and so forth, there's supposedly a python that has like a massive python that got into the chemical and it grew to outrageous numbers. Like the anaconda in, in that movie? Remember that movie from like the 90s? I'm trying to forget. <laughs> <laughs> so what are your thoughts on that first legend? Do you think that actually can happen? Not so much as the kids running around with like six arms and so forth, but with everything we know about Shin Chernobyl? Chernobyl. Chernobyl. It, with everything we know about that, what were your thoughts on it? I, mean, I, I think you're, anytime you have, whether it be government or um, private companies, I mean, you know, just look at like DuPont, and they were dumping stuff into the Ohio River. Um, it's always a possibility just because they've they got to find the cheapest and easiest form of getting rid of something in a river. It's pretty easy to, to get close to and, and hook up a line to start dumping into, so it's, it's definitely a possibility. Well, yeah, honestly, as far as that particular aspect goes, yeah, I'd say it's definitely true. Look what happened uh, or what spawned, what incident spawned during the Clean Water Act. It was all the, the fire on the was it Cuyahoga River. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, forth. and I mean, that's right there, right next to the Saudis yeah. landfill. So I think the that fire was in the 60s, right? Or, or late 60s, something like that. So where else are these companies, they can't dump their, their crap in the river now. Where are they going to put it? Oh, well, we got this landfill. Yeah. Right there. It's, uh, um, Actually just heard uh, for the first time since the fire of the Cuyahoga River is actually the EPA is deemed it safe to take fish out of there to eat it, or you know, to, to use it as, yeah. as a safely measure for food and so forth. 60 years later. I heard that. Boy, as far as the python goes, though, no. You don't think so? <laughs> no. I'm not buying that one. Especially, it's Ohio. Where is it going to uh, hold real. when it gets winter? Well, that's true. But think about this, though. There's an alligator in a river, you know, what, 50 miles from here? Okay. So someone had it as a pet and released it. So, I mean, that couldn't happen. Wait, where was this alligator supposedly at? Seneca County. When did they find it? It just like a couple weeks ago. Came off with a few kayakers while they're in the river. So they've had a few sightings of it. Dang, how big? All right, but the, I mean, if it's just like a three footer, all right, that's only ten. If it's a six footer, no, that's a, yeah, that's up here. So, and actually, I could almost see, uh, I can believe an alligator because of the way they hibernate, especially like in the North Carolina area, mm -hmm. where they will just have their snout sticking up above the water. River one freezes, freezes, yeah, right. down in. So, gotcha. yeah. Okay, so the second legend, no, no python. See if you can pull up my phone. L Town Python. See if there's anything that comes up.
Yeah, it's like Pen Penisulia Python. Is what it's called. P E N I N S. Huh? Yeah, sure. Yeah, Peninsula. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Man. Is there anything coming up? Stop <laughs> Penny the Python. There you go. All right, so we can't point anything up right now. So the second one, obviously there, there's a there's a cemetery in this Boston uh, village, hell town. Uh, legend says that when visiting the cemetery, you will see a ghostly man sitting on a bench, staring out into the distance, waiting on his family to come back for him. Yeah, cemetery. Yep. Um, it also says that if you visit the cemetery and return, the cemetery trees would be moved. So I find this very fishy, for one. I don't think a tree is just randomly going to move. Now, however, a ghostly figure sitting on a bench, sure, I can I can go with that legend. I can believe that would happen. Residual energy, yeah. Yeah. So. What would you do if you went there? Because usually people go at night. Because obviously, you know, they can't quote well, be there during the day, so they sneak in at night. What would you do if you saw a guy just sitting on a bench? Leave him alone. You'd leave him alone? Yeah. Yeah. You know who he is. You don't bother me. I'm like, hey, you waiting on your family? Yeah. All right. I'll leave you alone. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if, it, if, it, if he's a ghost, if he's a ghost ghost, right? I mean, I'd try to take a picture of him. Get some evidence, right? Yeah. But I have a good selfie. Well, I mean, once he knows you're there, he's gonna just vanish. He's a ghost. He won't like he won't be photographed. So you know, I know. Yeah. Maybe he's a narcissistic ghost. That's why I take one from a distance. Like a creeper. <laughs> <laughs> and then I move in. And then I'm like, hey man. You know. So this one is somewhat believable. Yeah, the paranormal. Have you seen Lord of the Rings? Did you say you haven't seen Lord of the Rings? Have you? Yeah. No, absolutely not. I'm not. Why are we even friends? That's what, what the shit. God, I can't pronounce the peninsula. I haven't seen Lord of the Rings. No. Nope. I'm done. I'm done. All right, well, let's show. <laughs> um, tree beard, man. <laughs> exactly. So you, you think, think a tree can just move? move? I mean, it, it wouldn't surprise me. These trees are technically alive. They're just not. I mean, they've been around for, for a century. They've been around longer than we have. Yeah, but do you realize what it has to do to move? Yeah. And you think that can happen? I'm just saying they're probably really good. At, they're probably really good master of disguises at this point. You know, they perfected their craft. Okay. Well, I guess we got one believer of this legend. Or was uh, Guardians of the Galaxy group? Yeah. group. Yeah. Remember when at the end of the first movie? I, I uh, what's his name? It. I'm not. I'm not into those movies. We can't even. We can't even carry on this whole conversation with you. Apparently. <laughs> but anyways, remember at the end of the movie when uh, what's his name is sharpening his knife, and then Groot's over, baby Groot's over there. He's dancing. Guy looks over. He stops. Yeah, I mean, come on, yeah, I can see it. So you think this legend's real? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I say. <laughs> so at least we have one person, I guess. Just a mystery. I don't know, man. Are you? I'm just, I'm, I'm. Are you being the devil advocate? I am. I'm, I'm thinking, what if, right? Like. Nessie's real, so why isn't some walking tree? Okay, I guess. So, here's the other thing. All they say is the trees move, but do, uh, do they move on their own, or is it by this, the man in the park? You know, uh, spirit is moving them yeah, each time you come, which, I mean, come on, just BS, because how is whoever is moving them, if it's on their own, how are they going to remember each individual person? 
hundreds of thousands of people that go there. Right. Like, oh crap, it's Bob again. We gotta move. You know. And, <laughs> well, like, or like take the, last? take a picture of it. And like, hey, I'm gonna be back in a week. And take the picture and hold it up. Like, yeah, that tree moved from here over there. Like, how do you really know if a tree moved? That's what I'm saying. How do you know? I guess. <laughs> Yes, man. So the, the trees would have to be in cahoots with the grass as well. Yeah. If the tree moved, there would be a bear spot. Haven't you ever seen the happening? Where the trees fight back and they release toxins to kill the humans? But they're not killing humans in this one. They're just. Right. Fighting. I'm just saying. Just like, with us. It, it wouldn't surprise me if the plants were talking to each other. Maybe. Well, the chemical spill got into the trees. Boom. The trees Boom. are now. Uh-huh rising up yeah we're gonna have a tree revolution here yeah because you're in the forest and they're like quit coming down for paper damn it <laughs> and stop biting your ass with my cover <laughs> just get yeah. your get your bow and arrows with uh with your gasoline on them ready right exactly okay, okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll come, come back, back to the tree <laughs> legend that was actually kind of interesting uh, uh the third the legend one. and this is yeah, I definitely like toilet paper. Oh, yeah. uh, the third legend is... I don't mean to offend any trees that may be listening yeah. or watching. Or someone who identifies as one. If you do it, subscribe. <laughs> so the, the third legend of this overall town, uh, there's a church in Helltown and it's supposedly a satanic church. This is probably the most believable legend out of all of them. Uh, the church is a Gothic style church with upside down crosses built into the church itself. So this is why people think that this, the satanic cults go to it because there's already the upside down crosses built into it. You can actually pull it up. I saw a picture of it earlier. It's actually a modern looking church. But it does. It does have the upside down crosses. I guess if you wanna let yourself kind of see it, I guess. You mean you talk about that the doorway? No. Pull up the. Just pull up the first picture. Yeah. Above that window. So, so above the right window. Above the door. Right above the door, right above, uh, or right below the, the bell. You don't think that's just architecture? It is. Exactly. It is. It's a Gothic style church. But this is why they say that it's a satanic church, is because it has upside down crosses built into it. This is why they picked it. So. You saw my eyes rolled in. Yeah. <laughs> so the church is said to have hours of operation, but it's never open. Also, there's a red barn that sacrifices would take place for the satanic rituals that's connected to the church. Local authorities allege, uh, allegedly warn motorists of satanic activity. This part does have some truth to it, though. Um, the authorities tell people loitering in the area, you know, you can't be in here after dark, blah, blah, blah. If you do, they arrest you. So they're trying to keep people out of the area because there's still residents that live around the area that's disturbing basically disturbing peace there's so many people that are coming in to try and find you know these set legends and so forth makes sense yeah however i firmly do believe this legend is true because one that church is now vacant it hasn't been open in how many years who can just go in there bust the door down, whatever, break the window, get in, and have their actual satanic ritual there. I mean, I mean, you're going to have that in any abandoned place. So, I mean, you just watch an episode of Ghost Adventures, and they'll be like, yeah, this place has been abandoned, and it's been used for satanic rituals. There'll be satanic symbols everywhere. Whether that's actually people doing the satanic rituals, or if it's just, you know, kids, or yeah, drawn, drawn stuff, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's meant to be seen. I wouldn't be surprised if this one was just a bunch of kids doing it. But I also wouldn't be surprised if it was actual, you know, Satanists going in there and doing it themselves as well. Because it's a church. 
what, what better way to get back at God than doing satanic rituals in church? Well, and the other thing is, it goes back to look at all the stuff that is supposedly rumored and legend to be there. Is what's a better hotbed than an abandoned church and a this cursed lane? So, yes, that is to me believable. Um, like you said, it, it happens everywhere. I watched a video on YouTube one time where a guy was going through a abandoned building at night and there were still candles lit in the circle. Now, he says, I can't go in there and just light them and do it for, for views. But, exactly. you know, there's still people out there that probably do do that. And there are people out there that do it just to screw the people, you know. But going to the fourth and final legend that we're going to cover in this video. This one's kind of creepy. Um, is the abandoned school bus. Can you pull that one up? This one, it has a good story to it, but um, it's got a sad revelation. I guess it's that story. Along the lines of the, the guy up in Alaska who died in a school bus. No, but that's a good uh, pants. Um, what's his name? They just took that bus out of it, too. Gotcha. I have a picture and I'll show it to you. God, what is his name? Anyhow, sorry, tangent. All right, squirrel. <laughs> yeah. The rumor, it's rumored to be full of children who were taken into the woods, murdered by a serial killer. Oh. You're not pulling up. Um, it's rumored that you couldn't, I'm sorry, it's rumored that you can still see the ghostly figures of the children in the school bus, because that's where they reside at, everything has been taken out, but if you look at the bus, kids are still sitting. So this is where the morbid part of it comes in, so obviously it has to deal with children and serial killers. Now the truth of it behind it is the bus was being used by a family. And when people would go to check out Helltown, they would see this family running around this this bus. And it would actually get back to other people saying, Yeah, it's haunted. I saw the people, you know, run around it, sitting in it and so forth. So as far right, there's the bus. So as far as it being haunted, I don't believe that. I don't believe the story of the serial killer as well. Because Obviously, everyone, even with the uh, legend we did a couple weeks ago, it had to deal with a serial killer taking someone in the woods. I think that's just kind of a backstory. Well, it could be some. It could actually be a serial killer like the last one, and just be exaggerated. Could be taking a full uh, bus full of kids in the woods and just going away with them. I guess it could be, but bus has now been moved from that area because so many people go through uh, Helltown trying to find it that the National Park Service is taking a while of getting rid of it and they throw it down there so it's no longer there. But in total of 2016 all the buildings were tore down and the only buildings left standing are the church and the old mill house. Which old mill house is rumored to be a funeral home but Everything I've checked out of that is it's a it's a uh, false. Basically, it's false rumor. rumor. Yeah, false rumor, and uh, it's on national historical plaque or places. Mm -hmm. So the national park services um, sold it back to private owner, even though it's on federal ground at this point. So, what do you guys think of this legend? Find it interesting? Yeah. Anything that you I think feel it'd like? A, I think it'd be a cool, uh, just campfire story. You know, if you're out there camping and you want to scare some people, you know, and it's still there, you can take people to it and then bring them back and actually tell them the story of it, right? I think that'd be a fantastic ghost story. 
Oh, you can't fire, so... I think that's probably where it came from, and it's probably what it is, but... That's just my opinion. So out of the four, how many do you think are believable? Python, no. The person in the graveyard, yes. It's a graveyard, so... Um, school bus, no. And then the... Um, Chemical spill. Chemical spill. That was a python, right? Well, the chemical spill actually was. Some of it was true. It's just more of the mutations of the children and the legends behind it. Yeah. I, I believe the spill is real. So and then the church, I think, is. I think it could be real. What do you think? I think yeah, two of them are. Uh, one is for sure. I mean, the the chemical. Mm. Uh, a good possibility uh, would be the, the ghost and the other two uh, just no. campfire stories or somebody saying that to build up tourism or who knows you know what so okay, okay. Well, what did you guys oh yeah oh yeah uh, I think I the actual picture of there. the school bus um no I think that one's from the Alaska the one Frank and I were talking about Looks like the one from Alaska. Why is it two different colors? Because the one, the one picture it was white. White. Oh, that was Photoshop. Oh, I got you. Okay. And this one's what, like a green? It's oh, not the same molded, bus though. Or rusted. Because looking at it, this is the rear of the bus. There should be a building off to the yeah. left. You know? I mean, you can you can tell. To that one, like you can tell. Yeah. So, pull up when when you get done looking at that one. Um, see if you can find any uh, any uh, firsthand experiences from Helltown. We ran, or I ran through a few. Um, one guy said he obviously it was a very creepy feeling going in there. He goes in at two in the morning at four. He went in at 2 in the morning, and when he came back out, there was a bunch of people um, surrounding his car. And when he got up to the car, they just, like, took off. So he wasn't able to talk to him. He went back again, and at 4.30 in the morning, he was coming back to his car, and the same thing happened. So he doesn't know if it's actually people that are residents of the surrounding area, or they're actually people that are just still there from when it was... Boston. Yeah. Which I thought was interesting. Because that's, that's believable. I mean, you'd be out in the middle of the woods. But that, I guess, yeah. That kind of behavior to me speaks of kids being around. Yeah. So. Be out to the morning trying to scare you. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how I'd do that if it was a kid. Do you know what kind of people would be going there to do whatever they do? These days, agreed, but you remember back from, it was in my time. Yeah. Yeah. I did it. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, my childhood, yeah, we weren't that afraid. We didn't have the fears ingrained in us that modern kids do, so that would have been, it just takes one creative kid and everybody else yeah. yeah, I wouldn't be able to do that now. I don't even know if I do it now as an adult. Because, like you said, you just don't, I mean, back then it was somewhat safe to, if you go scare someone, they're like, oh, ha, ha, funny. Now it's like, you may not come back. Exactly. Yeah. Back then, yeah, you just get your butt filled with rock salt. <laughs> yeah. Now, now it's just filled with lead. Yeah. Uh, that picture you just pulled up, it was actually the red barn that they supposedly do their rituals with. And again, we'll have all these pictures in the, you know, in the background, so they may not be fully what we're talking about directly, but you will be able to see this uh, in the background. What is that? It 
It is a mythical beast that roams the Helltown hillsides. It says to predate Helltown itself. It is called the Wendigo Monster. Oh, Wendigo. Wendigo. Talk about Wendigo. Uh, those are not. Another Native American. Yep. <clears throat> That's the red barn, isn't it? Yeah, it was. This was when the government took over. Yeah, yeah so down, go down the next one. That's the one that's on a hill that they supposedly do the ritual for. And they found the, the one guy that uh, was doing the exploring or whatever, he did find a rope hanging from one of the uh, beams. So he, you know, obviously just speculation. There'd be someone in there just messing around, or someone actually was doing stuff that they weren't supposed to. Yeah. But this is supposedly this is uh, patrolled heavily by authority. So I don't think maybe in the beginning they might have, but now I don't think people would be able to get away with the stuff that the internet basically says that people are doing. How we got? We good? All right. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.